<laughs> you're in Hong Kong, so you must be here for a reason, right? I think uh, I concur with your report that Hong Kong is the best city in the world to start a company. Uh, okay, on a day-to-day -day basis, how do you see that? Well, I think if you look at the infrastructure side, uh, we, at NIST we look at it as a hardware and software issue. Hardware-wise, it's, it's good rule of law, very transparent banking system, uh, and there's a huge talent pool here. International talent pool is, is, is very, very uh, interesting to tap into. And then the software side, people like living here. Uh, it's an interesting place to live. It's got a, a spark to it. And this is the sort of thing that we look for uh, when we're setting up and investing in businesses. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, you know, those boxes that you just ticked, uh, you, Singapore would tick all of them as well, but it comes in further down the rankings. Well, uh, and I, think, I think Hong Kong and Singapore have always got this rivalry, mm. um, which is why I think the Bloomberg report today, you'll have a lot of people in Hong Kong standing on chairs cheering. I think uh, it's certainly true that Singapore is a competitor, but I think both markets have their strengths and weaknesses. And for us at Nest, we're investing in Hong Kong. We, we see it has an advantage for lots of reasons. But, Simon, typically what do you invest in yourself? Or, you know, what are the spaces you're doing it in? Because that's where you're finding the best places yes. to invest in. Yes. Yeah. Well, our model's based on a, a, a system in the U.S. around companies like 500 Startups and Y Combinator. Mm. And when you ask them that question, they always say tech. But actually, uh, our mythology here is more around the people. In Hong Kong, uh, the entrepreneurs here are very hardworking, very disciplined. They're not scared of a long day's uh, work. And so we're, we're focusing first and foremost on the people and second, the idea. But we have noticed in Hong Kong, for example, there's a huge competitive advantage around emerging technologies like uh, 3D printing, um, like, of course, uh, technology-related products like Bitcoin, uh, which, again, Hong Kong uh, is a financial center and, and being a little bit more open to, to new things as an advantage. Not new to supermarkets, though. I mean, it's, uh. it's quite difficult to have that. I was just uh, actually coming up in the lift and I heard somebody uh, actually mention that when they were listening to the Bloomberg report. Well, that's why uh, startups in Hong Kong need support and encouragement, because they can disrupt the status quo and it needs to be disrupted. Um, I mean, of course, it's a very sensitive subject. Uh, the supermarket chains are owned by very powerful people, so no one wants to upset them. Well, that's why point, isn't it? Yes. No, I agree. And I think uh, one of the things we're trying to do at Nest is, is push through a monopolies law that's a little bit stronger to allow innovation to disrupt, ultimately to benefit consumers, bring down the cost of your shopping bill, for example. And online stores can do that. And there are a lot of startups that we've invested in and other in investors have invested in that are trying to disrupt. But you're right, there's a problem. Monopolies law needs, needs fixing. Uh, Simon, very quickly, uh, we've seen Japan go down nine uh, points, our positions, in just a year. Well, um, like, like your uh, reporter said on, on the criteria, you know, the detail is very important. But I think we all know Japan's struggling. They are making huge investments to turn themselves around. I, I personally really believe in the Japanese market. I mean, we, we, we have made a few investments in, in Japan. I do see it as a thriving, uh, strong, hard-working market. I'm sure next year it will bounce back.